people don't know what I look like until now. Until they start going to the movies. They're gonna see my face. Big deal. Yo, what's good? OMG Hawk, one man gang, back at y'all with another one. Yeah. This yeah. gonna be a crazy. Yeah. 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 Now you already know, I hope everyone is well as always. I know it might be kind of tough not stressing out right now considering the state of the world's affairs on top of COVID concerns and our day-to-day -day struggles. If you made it here for the first time, I appreciate you stopping by. If you end up liking the video, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and I'll keep you coming. If you're a returning viewer, I especially appreciate you and you already know the details in today's case are disturbing and viewer discretion is advised. The events in today's case bring us back to the hometown of our current United States president. Who's the president? Byron. Who? Byron. Hey, 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 hey. The city of Wilmington, Delaware. Now, it wouldn't be right if I didn't start this off with an apology. As you may or may not know, I attempted to cover these events this past December in my original video, The Big Screen Boys, A Wilmington War Story. Now, I can't cap. I did a terrible job. I had some names wrong and even the wrong picture of a major player. No excuse for that. I know Wilmington, y'all deserve way better. I appreciate everyone who reached out, whether it was positive or negative criticism. Real talk, I was humbled. I want to document these cases with the utmost integrity and respect to those involved and try my best to remain objective and just give you the facts without prejudice. When I realized what I had done and how many people it affected, I was so disappointed in myself, it kind of messed my head up for a while. I wouldn't really get back right until I got word of something unbelievable. But I'll touch on that briefly later, as well as my day trip to Wilmington and why I feel this case is so important. Now, please note, this story was compiled from a combination of court documents, testimony from those involved, and witness statements given to Delaware news outlets. It's fair to keep in mind that the government's version of events are just allegations and may not be exact accounts of such events, regardless of the resolution of the accused person's case. With that in mind, let's get right to it. On the sunny afternoon of June 6, 2017, six-year-old Jay Sean Banner was just a happy kid playing games with his little sister upstairs at his aunt's home on North Pine Street in the Compton Village neighborhood on the east side of Wilmington. Now, sometime that afternoon, he heard his mother, Shailen Banner, had just arrived and he excitedly ran downstairs and asked if she would take him to his father's house over in Riverside. Shailen agreed, so her and Jay Sean hopped in Shailen's SUV along with his little sister and his grandmother and started on their way. Around the same time, Markovitz Stanford, aka Young Money, had just finished a meeting with his parole officer in the neighboring city of Newcastle. He left the office and got into a friend's car who was waiting to give him a ride back to Wilmington. Unbeknownst to Young Money, he was being followed by two men in a pickup truck on their way back to the city. The car stopped and Young Money got out near the intersection of East 6 and Spruce Street at the same time Shailen had just turned onto the street on her way to Deshaun's father's house. Shailen stopped at the stop sign and waited a few extra seconds as Young Money was walking across the street in front of her SUV. As he nears Shailen's driver's side headlight, the pickup truck blows through the intersection and screeches to a stop right in front of Shailen, locking her in as multiple gunshots start flying out the truck's passenger window aimed at Young Money. Young Money ran and ducked, taking cover behind Shailen's SUV. The pickup sped away and Young Money managed to flee unharmed, but unfortunately, Shailen's white Ford Explorer was struck by gunfire multiple times, and tragically, one of the rounds struck six-year-old Jashawn in the mouth, slicing through his upper lip before entering his neck and getting lodged in his vertebrae. Wilmington's latest episode of gun violence has a six-year-old boy hospitalized in critical condition with a head wound. The boy was taken to A.I. DuPont Children's Hospital and is listed in critical condition. They don't have a moral compass as far as I'm concerned, you know, just like yesterday. He's trying to hide behind a car. He doesn't know who's in the car. He doesn't know what's happening. And, you know, I, I don't really think about it anymore. 
he had clinically died in the back seat before a Wilmington police officer performed CPR on scene. He clinically died again in the ambulance where paramedics were able to revive him, and later that day in the hospital, he would once more be brought back by the doctors. Jay Sean was in a coma for five days. He awoke from his coma but was paralyzed, only being able to move his eyes, and was only surviving with the assistance of life support machines. His prognosis was grim, and doctors had even advised Shailene to pull the plug. But that was definitely not an option for her, and she wrote it out for another five months with Jay Sean slowly improving day by day, eventually breathing on his own, and a few months later he had improved enough to return home with his family. During the time Jay Sean spent in the nursing home, Shailene took classes to learn how to care for him, and now she's his main caregiver. Although Jay Sean remains paralyzed, his family's love and support helps give him the best quality of life possible for him to have now in his present state. Jay Sean, at six and a half years old, was the most vibrant, um, kind-hearted, loving, caring, free-spirited, fighting little soldier. Young Money managed to avoid getting shot that afternoon, but this wasn't the first attempt on his life. In fact, this wasn't the first attempt on his life that day. We would learn that this was only the culmination of a long time beef between former associates with various shootings between them. And on that day in particular, the beef would reach its ugliest as Jay Sean's shooting was the last in a series of events which includes multiple shootings, a kidnapping, and even a murder. All allegedly committed by a crew known to the area as the Big Screen Boys. The Big Screen Boys were a crew really putting on for the city of Wilmington and simultaneously operating a large-scale narcotics operation in and around the city with notable success. Jay Sean's shooting would be the catalyst to the organization's demise, but allow me to take it back a few years just to get a better understanding of the tragic set of circumstances that led up to the outrageous events that occurred on June 6, 2017. The Big Screen Boys were a small crew moving major work out of Delaware, supplied by Eric Lloyd, a.k.a. Butter Rico. Other key members included Michael Pritchett, a.k.a. M-Doc or Tucker Max, Dion Oliver, a.k.a. Mr. Fine Wine, Maurice Cooper, a.k.a. Coop or Coop DeVille, Dante Sykes, a.k.a. Tayball, Therese Tinnen, a.k.a. Versace T, and Ryan Bacon, better known as Wilmington Rapper and Big Screen Boys frontman, Buck 50. I'm from South Bridge Extension, yet I'm Project. I swear to God, it was a whole nother mindset. Where well, you can have 50 grand up in your closet and two cars, but ain't move about your mom yet. Buck 50 is a heavy bar spitter who rapped about raw street content he was actually living. Buck 50's early years were mentionable as well, considering a documented account of his uncle getting shot while shielding a then two-year-old Buck 50 from gunfire. He grew up eventually becoming a product of his environment and catching cases. Later in 2005, a then 21-year-old Buck 50 was arrested on federal charges, including possession of a firearm by a convicted felon and possession with intent to distribute heroin, and was sentenced to 60 months in federal prison. Buck did his bid, came home, and got busy rapping, releasing freestyles and videos on YouTube alongside the rest of the big screen boys. His first project, titled Money On My Head, dropped in July of 2014, with the standout track Did It For My Dogs. The project was going crazy around the 302, and it set a new area standard when it came to reality street rap. The standout video, in my opinion, is titled What's Your Problem, where he details an attempted robbery, that took his cousin's life and left him with staple scars up his entire abdomen. Now, at the same time Buck 50 was pushing the music, the crew was getting substantial street money in Wilmington. The crew had bought a bunch of properties and opened up various limited liability companies in order to launder the drug money. They controlled multiple drug corners in the city as well as the South Bridge and Riverside housing projects. Now, allegedly, M.Dot and Versace T were also members of another faction dubbed the Four Horsemen of Riverside, along with Dwayne White, a.k.a. Boop, and Rasheed White, a.k.a. Fat Goat. The Four Horsemen were the contract hitters for the big screen boys and acted as a group's muscle, while all the members distributed cocaine and heroin throughout the Wilmington area, as well as Tyrone Roan, a.k.a. T-Rex, 
Damon Anderson, aka Frog, and William Wisher, who all sold work for Boop and Butter Rico. In 2014, Young Money was also doing his thing in Wilmington. Now, by some accounts, Young Money and the big screen boys were cool coexisting with each other for a while, but at some point, things took a turn for the worse. Now, when I first heard the name Big Screen Boys, I thought it just meant they like to show out, spend big money, shut down clubs, make movies as some people say, but I was completely off. The gang was in fact making movies. Turns out, Big Screening is a term made up by the gang referring to recording video of their ops' wives or girlfriends, engaging in sexual encounters, and posting them on social media platforms. Apparently, Young Money's girlfriend, Fiona Perkins, was featured in one of these videos with Buck 50 and Fine Wine. The video was posted online around the same time as a music video was posted to YouTube in which Buck was standing next to Fine Wine and Versace T and referring to Young Money as a rat. It was on from here as Young Money declared war against the big screen boys. And the beef continued for years. Butter Rico would get locked up for a short bid on a parole violation and would leave the operation to Boop, who allegedly put a $20,000 bounty on Young Money. But the situation really turned up in April of 2017. Buck 50 released another song titled Conversations with Pac, in which there's more references to a rat referring to Young Money. Soon after the track dropped, Young Money and an unnamed associate saw Buck 50 driving around Wilmington. He offered his friend $10,000 to kill Buck and gave him a gun and a mask. Now, fortunately for Buck 50, when the unnamed man attempted to hit, the gun malfunctioned and it wouldn't shoot. That following month of May 2017, Young Money and his unnamed friend caught M. Dot and Versace T on a Wilmington street, pistol whipped them and relieved them of the cash and jewelry. The crew went back to Versace T's grandmother's house and they decided they needed to raise the bounty price on Young Money and boop up the amount to 50,000. About a week after the robbery, someone spotted Young Money and same unnamed friend walking down the street and started shooting at them. Young Money and his boy shot back. No one was injured in the shooting, but Young Money was arrested and detained in the state correctional center. The big screen boys with help from a bail bondsman kept tabs on his custody status until he made bond and was released around June 1st. A few days after Young Money hit the streets again, M. Dot got word that he was still with Kiona and was staying with her at her apartment at the Four Seasons Complex in Newark, Delaware. The night of June 5th, M. Dot called the rest of the crew, letting him know he had the drop on Young Money. By 8 in the morning on June 6th, M. Dot and Tayball had swapped their cars for their girls' cars and had parked near Kiona's apartment in view of her red Camaro, which Young Money often drove. Inside the two cars were Buck 50, M. Dot, Fine Wine, Tay Ball, and one more person. They waited for a few hours before they saw Kiona leave her apartment by herself and get into her car. They followed her as she went to a fast food spot before returning to her apartment complex. Now, once she pulled in and parked, Fine Wine ran up on her with a gun and demanded her apartment keys and cell phone. He tossed the keys to the others and they went inside her apartment to search for young money while Fine Wine sent text messages to him from Kiona's phone asking where he was, hoping he would reveal his location thinking he was texting a girlfriend. At 11.40 a.m., Young Money replied back saying he was in the intersection of Route 896 and Route 40 in Newark. The crew at the apartment with Kiona stuffed her in the trunk of one of the cars and everyone took off towards 896 in search of the target. After about 10 minutes of hunting, they found Young Money walking down 896. Both cars pulled over and the crew started busting shots at them. The crew emptied their guns and took back off down 896. Young Money managed again to avoid being hit by any of the shots. Versace T, who was watching from his own vehicle, called the crew and let them know Young Money got away unharmed. The big screen boys then drove with Kiona to a church parking lot where they blindfolded her and put her in the trunk of another car. Buck 50 and Tayball then drove with her in the trunk to Elkton, Maryland, where they drove down a gravel road to a wooded area, forced her out the car, and she was shot five times, ending her life. The other three returned M. Dot's girlfriend's car and took his pickup truck back to Wilmington. A 
couple hours later, the gang got word of Young Money's parole meeting in neighboring Newcastle. MDOT and Fine Wine rolled to the office and followed Young Money back to Wilmington. It was there on East 6th and Spruce Street that they made their last failed attempt on Young Money's life. This was the shooting where Jay Sean would sadly be struck in the face, altering his life forever. Young Money was arrested later that night for violating his probation. He was recorded on a prison phone call saying, 20 bullets today, all at point blank range. I am blessed up, I am telling you, bro. I swear to you. They pull up at point blank range and dump on me. The next day, the crew met up at Versace T's apartment in Newark to devise a plan to hide MDOT's pickup and get rid of the guns they used the previous day, which were stashed in the woods nearby. MDOT's pickup was described to police by witnesses and surveillance footage would catch the shooting on video. Now, it's also alleged that Young Money might have disclosed who he thought shot at him on that monitored jail phone call. MDOT was wanted by police for Jay Sean's shooting. That afternoon, MDOT drove his truck towards Seaford, Delaware, with Fine Wine and Tay Ball following in another car. About an hour into the drive, police pulled him over and he was arrested. Police took two phones from MDOT at the time of his arrest. State police and the feds started investigating the shooting and obtained search warrants for the phones recovered in MDOT's arrest. This in turn led to more court orders and more search warrants for the cellular data from all the big screen voice phones, including Boop's phone, which provided investigators with substantial evidence of a narcotics conspiracy, as well as correspondence with an inmate in the jail where Young Money was in an attempt to get him hit behind bars. Boop approached Deshaun's family multiple times with an offer of $20,000 for a statement that would say MDOT wasn't involved in the shooting. Each time the family declined and informed investigators of the bribery attempts. He would also post court records provided by an inside source at the courthouse on social media in an attempt to intimidate witnesses. Not a smart move as this would mark the end of the movie for the big screen boys, as in 2017 and 2018, the feds hit the crew with federal racketeering charges, as well as various charges related to drug conspiracy, weapons charges, the kidnapping and murder of Fiona Perkins, and the shooting of six-year-old Jay Sean Banner. Buck 50 and Tayball were facing the death penalty, while the others were facing decades, if not life, behind bars. When faced with all the charges against him, Tayball flipped and cooperated with investigators. He pled guilty to federal kidnapping and stalking charges, avoiding the murder and shooting charges, and was the key witness in Butter Rico on Boop's 2019 trial. He sat on the stand and detailed everything from the beginning, including the long-standing beef with Young Money and Big Screen Boy's lucrative drug operation and each individual's involvement from the narcotics to violence. T-Rex also took the stand for the prosecution in that trial, testifying to his part in the narcotics conspiracy and the contract on Young Money's life. He stated in court that Jashawn's shooting had upset himself, Boop, and others. William Wisher had also testified for the prosecution. Butterico was convicted and briefly escaped custody while awaiting sentencing, but was quickly captured and returned to custody. He was sentenced to 30 years in federal prison. Boop was convicted of the drug conspiracy and was sentenced to 60 years in federal prison. He beat the charges related to Jay Sean's shooting. Frog was convicted of drug conspiracy charges and sentenced to 32 years in federal prison. Buck 50 reached a plea deal with prosecutors where he will receive 30 years in federal prison for stalking, kidnapping, and a weapons charge. Now, it's noted that in his deal, he is not required to provide any information on his co-defendants. Coop had got snitched on in a separate investigation where he sold heroin and a gun to an informant and was arrested for various weapons violations along with drug charges and was sentenced to a total of 75 years. Charges against him were dismissed in this case. MDOT took a plea deal for 25 years in prison and Fine Wine also took a deal for 27 and a half years in prison. Their deals also don't require that they provide information on their co-defendants. Now, Tayball pled guilty to a few charges, 
One being kidnapping resulting in death, which carries a mandatory life sentence. But I'm not sure how his cooperation will affect his sentencing in May. Versace T took a plea deal last year, although I couldn't find the details of his sentencing. I will note that many people have hit me up saying that he cooperated with investigators as well, and I couldn't corroborate this information on any court documents, but... You ready? Uh-huh. Fifth, send the paperwork home. I wish I could. They ain't produce it for the public, but this here is just as good. Y'all ought to point the finger. So blame Tucker for this. He said the people need to hear Sots becoming a snitch. How he went out like Rico, but claimed he wanted to be Mitch. I quit rapping, so today I'm here talking my shit. Sots, you told the feds you on the same level as BD. You still dying to be his equal. Why you lying to them people? You fooled the city. You definitely fooled me. You made that punk ass 100000 even look like three, and it hurt me. They know I bet you was worth a buck thirty, and that's including the money you owe BDB and Birdie. That to duck you down at thirty, you a peasant, you not worthy. Make his post like you sturdy. Why we in Philly, you in Jersey? And FDC, the people seen you was stressed, and they said you retook your shahada because you needed protection. Told them lies like you was the one and BD was second. Why you ain't telling them you try to get your friends a lethal injection? So tell us what it is that made you do what you did, you small head bitch. What the fuck was going on in your head? Remember Lil' Ann threw you up in his trunk, rode through the city doing 60, hitting every speed bump? <laughs> Free him, the city need him, and niggas like us, us as in big screen, me, Bopper, and Tuck. Free the guys too, Froggy, D, Beatty, and Bub, and Snub, and none of us is doing less than a dub. Gotta expose you to the folks who don't know you, it was rat on rat violence when Jig smacked and choked you. You got in cause you was BD and Beast guy, you ain't from the project, stop to raise you from east side. I had the two bedroom spot up in College Park. I spent 3500 for a Rottweiler dog. This call is from a federal prison. Those in them clubs, pussy, you was not involved. You carry me, man, that shit is bananas on tour. You was my dancer, I was MC Hammer. Stop it, Otis. The people came to see me. You got low self-esteem without a hat. You look like E.T. A book of grand jury statements from Safir Rouse. Why you think we took them pleas and we not in trial? And Young Money way worse than the rest of them. A two-time rat, he did exactly what I expect of him. Fifth got time for this shit, but he don't. They told him to hit y'all with the back-to-back like Drake, but he won't. Y'all thinking after rat and life will be the same, but it won't. Look at D-Nice, he home, but he a rat and he broke. Takashi Sash 9. That's the new name we gave you. If Tamir was alive, he probably wouldn't even claim you. I told Tucker when we first came in, if you ain't tell at the station, you'll tell by the arraignment. Big screen boys, we leaving out how we came in. We up in this bitch like your BM who y'all came in. Right ass niggas. You niggas will never be honorable. It's fair to say I heard it from a reputable source. There were well over 30 people charged in the main indictment and hundreds of years of jail time handed down altogether. The takedown had a heavy impact on the city that will last for years to come. I sincerely wish everyone the best moving forward. After the original video dropped, I started getting feedback from people close to those involved. I understand why people were upset about the timing and that was irresponsible of me. Many loved ones and supporters of the Big Screen Boys gave me that work in the comments section and in my DMs, and most of it was well deserved. Someone actually hit me up and said a couple of the Big Screen Boys had seen or were told about the video, and they felt like I was trying to make them look bad before trial. I bugged out a little because I realized the gravity of the situation I had antagonized. You know, I later got word that someone involved understood what I was trying to do, and that meant a lot to me. You know, making these videos and documenting crime and social issues is a new hobby of mine, but I'm very passionate about it. I want to be a voice for the voiceless, which brings us to Jay Sean. You know, the hardest part for me to deal with is the ones close to him that were disappointed that I removed the video. I feel like I failed little Man by not doing the story good enough. I appreciate the people that reached out who felt I did his portion justice and were thankful that I had took the time to tell his story. I think about Jay Sean a lot and I get tight because I know Shaylin is strong. I know the family gonna hold it down, but I can't imagine how much of a day-to-day -day struggle it has to be, especially when the publicity goes away. The emotional toll it has to take on the whole family, as well as the financial toll it must take. For anyone who would like to donate to Jay Sean, I'll pin his GoFundMe in the comments section if you'd like to help out. My best wishes to Jay Sean, Shaylin, Joshua Potts, and the entire Banner family. I mean that from deep down where that pain come from, for real. Even though the violence 
um, stop some of his movement. It didn't stop his movement, which is to bring peace and solidarity to all of us. You know, I drove down to Wilmington on the 31st of January to watch MDOT's trial. Since I messed up so bad on the first video, I wanted to watch the trial for myself and maybe apologize in person to a couple people. And in expectation of the trial lasting some days, I got a room at the Fairview Inn just a few minutes from the courthouse. Now, there's a lot I could say about that place, but from a couple signs I saw in the lobby, I got the impression that some people actually reside there long term. So I'll just say if that's home for you right now, I hope things get better. I gotta say the courthouse was impressive and intimidating at the same time. I went to courtroom 6B only to see a sign to go to courtroom 2A to view the trial via live stream. I was expecting a larger turnout, but there was only a handful of people there to watch. There was a girl who sat to my left who seemed really concerned for MDOT. I felt bad for her. There was a girl in front of me on her laptop, and I'm not even sure if she was there for the trial or just because it was cold out. Man, it wasn't until after like 11 a.m. that MDOT appeared on screen and I realized there would be no trial. Although I didn't learn more details about the case or get to meet any of Jay Sean's family, I did gain a lot of understanding about the dynamic in Wilmington, and I'm still glad I went. If you're still here, I appreciate you two times. To everybody locked down, stay positive, especially if you got a date. Much love to everybody from the 302. I appreciate y'all. Please stay well and stay safe. Until next time, one man gang.